Welcome to my second video covering content for test 2 of the OCR Entry Level Certificate in Computer Science. In this video, we examine the concept of secondary storage. Let's begin. We will start with a quick recap. Last lesson, we looked at primary storage, which is used to store programs and data that the computer is currently using. This type of storage is volatile, meaning it loses its data when the power is turned off. Examples of primary storage include RAM, ROM and cache memory. Secondary storage stores programs and data on a long-term basis and is non-volatile, meaning the data is retained even if the computer loses power. Examples include hard disk drives, DVD drives and SD cards, with many more besides. Before we look at specific devices, it is important to know that secondary storage devices can be categorised by the technology they use to store the data. There are three categories you must know about. The first is magnetic storage. This uses magnets and magnetisation to store data. Magnetic storage has the benefits that it is cheaper per megabyte to produce, it can hold vast quantities of data, but it is mechanical, which means it is not as quick to read from or to write to due to the limitations in the speed the motors can run. The next technology is optical storage. This uses light in the form of lasers to physically burn data onto its storage media, which is either a CD, DVD or Blu-ray disc. These discs are cheap to produce and are highly portable, meaning they are easy to carry around. However, they can only contain a limited amount of data and the process of burning to optical storage media is quite slow. The final technology is solid state or flash memory. This has no moving or mechanical parts. Instead, it uses electronic circuits. Flash memory is durable, meaning it is extremely difficult to damage, has extremely fast read and write speeds and has high storage capacity. The biggest disadvantage is that flash memory degrades over time due to the constant writing and overwriting of data. Let's look at a range of devices now that fall under each category. First up we have the hard disk drive, which is a form of magnetic storage. The purpose of the hard disk drive is to store programs and data on your computer on a long term basis. This is where you install your programs to and where you save your files to. It works by using a read-write head, which magnetises the surface of a spinning metal disk. The magnetisation creates different binary patterns which represent the data you are storing. Hard disk drives are non-volatile, meaning they keep the data when the power is switched off, and they have a typical capacity of between 1 and 4 terabytes. To put this in context, 1 terabyte could store approximately 200,000 songs or 17,000 hours of music. Our next magnetic storage device is the tape drive. These are usually used for backing up large quantities of data. Backing up is the process of making a copy of something, and the tape drive usually makes a copy of an entire computer system in case it has a failure. Tape drives have the benefit that they are relatively cheap and that they have extremely large capacities. However, they are slow to write to and read from, and the data is read sequentially. So you cannot just go straight to a file when it has been stored on the tape, you actually have to go through each file stored before it in order to access it. Finally, tape drives are very similar to old cassettes that we used to store music on, in that they use a winded strip of magnetic tape to store the data on. Next we have our optical storage devices. These use light in the form of lasers to burn data to a physical disk. If you own a CD, a DVD or a Blu-ray disk, this is the storage media of an optical drive. The benefits of optical storage devices are that they have a large storage capacity, although not as large as magnetic and flash memory devices. The storage media, i.e. the disks, are cheap to produce. It is a permanent form of storage and the disks are highly portable. The disadvantages include the fact that the drives take a long time to burn data to the media. In other words, they have slow write speeds. 
and the storage media can easily be damaged from scratches, which will make them unreadable. It is worth noting that the CD, DVD and Blu-ray drives are the storage devices. The CD, DVD and Blu-ray discs are storage media. Be careful of this distinction in your exam. If you are asked to name an optical storage device and you simply write down DVD, this is wrong. You must say DVD drive. Lastly, each type of optical storage media can hold a different amount of data. CDs store 850 megabytes of data, DVDs store 4.7 gigabytes of data, and Blu-ray discs store up to 50 gigabytes of data approximately. Finally, we have our flash memory devices. The first of which is the solid state drive. Flash memory uses electricity to change the state of circuits on a circuit board. Unlike a normal circuit board, this change of state is permanent until overwritten, so the data remains when the power is off. The solid state drive does the same job as a mechanical hard disk drive in that it stores installed programs and saved data on your computer. However, it is faster to read from and to write to, and it is more durable due to the fact of having no moving parts. The major drawback is that it is more expensive to produce this technology, so it is very expensive to buy higher capacity models. Also, over time, solid state drives decay due to the writing and overwriting of data, meaning that they probably need to be replaced more often than a hard disk drive. A little exam tip. If you are asked to state two secondary storage devices, do not use both of the solid state drive and the hard drive as your examples. This is because they both do the same job. You need to use one of these two examples and then select a different device altogether. Our next flash memory device is an SD card. These are small storage devices which act as storage for phones, cameras, tablets and more. Because of their small size, they can be used in a range of devices and they have a reasonable capacity for storing data. They are strong and durable, meaning they can be knocked around without breaking. While they are not the fastest to read from and write to, they are suitable for their purpose. Typical capacities for SD cards are between 2GB and 32GB, although higher capacities are available. Our last device is the USB pen drive. These are used to store data and to swap data between two or more computers. They have the benefit of being small and highly portable with a good storage capacity. They do not have the fastest read-write speeds, but they are sufficient. The problem with a lot of USB pen drives is that they can break easily and can be unreliable. Also, they are easy to lose. Typical capacity for pen drives is anywhere between 1GB and 128GB. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you in the next one where we'll examine some of the legal, moral and environmental issues associated with computing.